So uh, tonight, tonight, I'd like to focus my remarks really on two sets of issues. Firstly, transport policy as it, as it affects all of Melbourne, and secondly, specifically with the second term of an Andrews government, will mean what that will mean for transport for Richmond residents. So I want you to cast your mind back to 2010, and Victoria had at that stage a comprehensive 20-year transport plan, setting out a detailed set of investments in public transport by our government. We were not, we were not re-elected, and the day after the Bailey government was elected, that plan was torn up, and nothing else was put in its place. Frankly, it was the old traditional focus on roads, not public transport, from the then Liberal government. Uh, and the Andrews, the Andrews government has aimed to deliver on both. We all remember the East-West Link, and uh, we can certainly have a bit more to say about that as we, as we go forward. It was ill-conceived. Uh, it did not return less than 46 cents in the dollar and had to be underpinned by a side letter from the then Treasurer. Uh, quite an unprecedented action by, uh, by that government, uh, which really spoke to what both the folly uh, of the East-West Link uh, and, and the dreadful, uh, the really uh, dreadful strain that was put upon residents in our area uh, who had to fight this campaign and, and particularly families who had lived uh, in the area for 40, 50, 60 years who, was, who were potentially seeing themselves uh, displaced from their homes. It was, a, it was a very, very difficult time. We note that the, uh, that the, uh, the opposition leader uh, has in fact indicated that uh, he will do the North East Link uh, and he'll also do the East West Link, and I and I do note, uh, Kathleen, that there were in fact two two proposed routes: one which was the existing alignment, and another one that basically slides across the city towards the Westgate Tunnel. So, uh, under a under a guy government, the the uh, East West Link is back in town. So, but in sharp contrast, can I say, since 2014, the Andrews government came to an office with a clear plan and a strong commitment to deliver. Over the four years, we've delivered $24.9 billion in transport initiatives, as opposed to our predecessors who spent roughly about $300 million. We've invested massively in more trains, trams and buses, and we have removed now 26 level crossings, with uh, 29 being a target by the end of 2018. Now people say, oh, that's, that's good for the, for the road network, but it's also incredibly good for the train network as well, because it actually, with better signalling, lifts the capacity of the train network, massively lifts that capacity. So we think on both counts, this is a very, very good project, uh, and one that the government continues to steam away on. The Melbourne Metro, as we know, will transform the rail network by not, not only creating a high-speed link from effectively danning on to Sunbury with five new inner suburban stations, but also creating space on other lines to, incre to increase peak capacity by almost a third. So if you think about what Melbourne Metro is going to do, it's going to start over in Kensington, uh, in, sorry, I beg your pardon, in, in North Melbourne, just near the, the North Melbourne football ground. Uh, and what the land on which it is being constructed is in fact an area called Arden, which I have been involved in rezoning. That, uh, at that stop, we'll, we'll not only have the first of our metro train stations, uh, but we'll also have the capacity to have really high level uh, planning for what uh, that area is going to look like in the future, because all of that land is either owned uh, by the state government or the, or the city of Melbourne, and we're working very collaboratively with a very collaborative way with them. Think about the fact that that, that first stop, at, that first Melbourne Metro stop will be two minutes from Melbourne University, then it will swing around into the city, two stops down Swanson, and then out into, out into uh, St Kilda Road. This, this is a city changing project, absolutely. And at its peak, it will, it will be moving in the order of 39 to 40,000 people per hour. I mean, this is a huge change to the way not only our city, not only the way the city centre operates, but absolutely releasing capacity right through the network. We've got 65 new high capacity trains, we'll be able to carry more passengers, 
more reliably and existing trains will be uh, redistributed to increase frequency on all other lines. The Westgate Tunnel Project will provide a much needed second Yarra River crossing and will take thousands of trucks off suburban roads. We know that the Westgate, tunnel, uh, the Westgate Freeway, the bridge is completely uh, over capacity and we have to find a second river crossing. It is really not negotiable. The North East Link Project will not just provide the missing link in the ring road around Melbourne, it will take substantial pressure off the Eastern Freeway and the inner city. That is because it will divert traffic going to Melbourne Airport and trucks travelling between the eastern and northern suburbs to obviate any need for them to come into the city in the first place down the freeway. A critical part uh, of the North East Link project is a dedicated busway that will provide express services spread, spreading out uh, from Doncaster right into the city, but also linking to metropolitan bus services <coughs> out in areas like Doncaster, Templestowe and Warrandyte. This is a really important initiative and, and with the next, uh, the next models of, of, of buses, we'll be able to be shifting significant numbers of people down the middle of the freeway. Labor has also delivered the, de the dedicated bus lanes in, in Hoddle and Victoria Streets to ease traffic flows. Tram services through Richmond are now higher frequency and serviced, thankfully, by the larger E-class trams using the new and accessible super tram stops. And can I say the City of Yarra has also done a fantastic job improving and extending the bike path network to increase both safety and convenience for riders. Can I say to our friends who are here for uh, the Walmart Street Bridge project, uh, many of, I've met with a number of you last week and I, am, I will be pleased to be coming on Saturday uh, to your rally. Uh, to advise you uh, of the progress that the government has made in terms of collaborating with the, with the City of Yarra and the City of Stonington because we want to see uh, this bridge project sorted out. It is dangerous, it is dangerous for pedestrians, it's dangerous for cyclists and we're going to have to do better. Thanks very much for the opportunity.